Hello and welcome everyone. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. The show is called My Strategy. Well, very happy to be here with you today and really glad that you could join us. My Strategy episodes are live and on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. In this show, we're going to talk about investing in yourself. We're going to be talking about the most important investment that you can make, and that is to invest in yourself. We're going to talk about the meaning of investing in yourself, I'll give you some focus areas, and teach you how to develop a strategy and a plan. Well, very happy to be here with you today, and Happy New Year. We are now starting 2020. And for me, Saturday is a great day of the week to reflect on my strategy. And keep in mind that any time is a good time to assess and reflect on your strategy. The My Strategy Show is growing and continues to grow. We're on iHeart, iTunes, Player FM, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spreaker, and many other digital platforms. So if you'd like to listen to the replay of this show or see some of the other shows, they're all available on those. You can find me on most social media platforms. My Twitter handle is at HawkinsJohn, and my website is JohnMHawkins.com. So that's uh, on Twitter is HawkinsJohn, and the website is JohnMHawkins.com. And just like anything in life, we need to have a strategy and a plan because the best laid plans don't always work. This week I'm looking for stories from you on um, investing in yourself. Do you have any good stories, a tip or a trick? Please send it to talk at johnmhawkins.com. Or if you'd like to uh, give us your feedback, be on the show, you can also send an email to talk at johnmhawkins.com. Uh, we'll start the conversation. So today we're talking about investing in yourself. We're going to be talking about creating good habits and a good process. So what does investing in yourself mean? We're going to talk about how to change your schedule learn how to plan for it. We're also going to talk a little bit about some of the key areas you should be thinking about when you start to focus on your personal investment strategy, how to develop new skills, explore your creative side. And without, it goes without saying that also your mind and body has to be in good shape as well. We're then going to talk about some low-cost ways for you to invest in yourself this year. Uh, things that uh, you could start doing now without having to uh, spend lots of money on them. We're then going to talk about some strategies to help keep you on track, talking about getting order out of chaos, uh, getting things out of your head and down on paper uh, so that you can prioritize. Also looking at things from a different perspective. And I think perspective is one of those things that we always need to be thinking about because, you know, from our perspective, we see things one way. But when we look at it from a different perspective, usually there's a different vantage point. And then we're going to talk about how to get your plan put in place. So that's the plan for today, what we're going to be talking about. So we're talking about investing in yourself. And I want to start off with an article that I've got here. It's called Seven Different Ways to Invest in Yourself. The author says, what's the first thing you think of when you hear the word invest? You probably associate it with the stock market or other financial venture. I said, great. Those are positive things to ruminate on, no doubt, and certainly part of the self-made discussion. But for starters, we're referring to a whole other kind of investment. We're talking about the magic that happens when you, with full intention, make the unbashed commitment to invest in yourself. And I think that's the real key differentiator here. Those who have you know, achieved tremendous success in the financial world or business world, they have a plan, a strategy. They have a way to go about focusing on trying to accomplish those goals. So what I'm saying in today's show is that we want to start making plans to invest in ourselves. And we need to treat it with as much diligence as you would any other investment that you might make. The author says, when you invest in yourself, what you're really doing is choosing yourself. You're banking on yourself to make moves that will take you farther in life. As author Nellie Galen puts it, when you choose self, people will notice you and they will choose you over and over again. Investing in yourself means you stop drifting through the life waiting for things to happen. And instead, take concrete actions that bring you closer to your best self. 
Because in order to start your journey to financial self-reliance, you're going to need the best version of you possible. Nellie also says that you have to kill certain parts of yourself for others to be born, which means that you have to kick the parts that no longer serve you to the proverbial curb and make room for your true authentic virtues to shine. I think this really encapsulates what we do on a weekly basis as we try and develop new strategies, as we look at our current state, as we try and figure out what actions and activities we need to be taking and making to get us to that desired future state. And that is what this is all about. And when it comes time to personal development, what better way to start off the new year than to have an investment in ourselves? The author gives us some tips here and things that we should be thinking about. She says, how do you start? How do you actually go about the business of investing in yourself? The entire prospect may be daunting to you. So she suggests breaking it up into chunks. Look at different pieces of your life that might benefit from a revamp. At the same time, start looking at how you might go deeper with certain aspects of yourself. She goes on to give a few examples, and we'll go through some of those. But the AM Journal, the Good Morning Journal, cherished, praised, and advocated by practically every wellness coach, motivational speaker, and creative on the planet. It's a good point. Why do all these coaches, CEOs recommend writing? Because it works. It is something that is foolproof, and it's something that has time and time again showed results something you might want to consider. The second thing she says, just get a dream team in place or any team from that perspective. We can't go it alone. We need help. And getting the team in place to help us is something that we should seriously consider. Number three is fake it till you make it. You might not feel that you have the skills. You might not feel that you are confident enough. You might not feel that you're the right person for the job. But if you can get out there and do it and show up, 80% of success is just showing up. The rest of it's talent and a combination of luck and other things. So maybe fake it till you make it. Get out there and start doing it. Carve out an hour. You have to spend time and invest time if you want to have change. Put yourself out there. Are you marketing yourself? Are you talking to people? Are you networking? She also suggests we might want to find our voice. No matter what direction you're going as you take on your path to being self-made, you're going to have to find your voice. Whatever you embark on will require you give a tone, style, and message to your brand. So what is your brand? What is your voice? Get intentional. Go out there and start to do things that are going to help you get ahead. If you want to start a company, see yourself as a CEO. If you want to start a charity, see yourself as the leader of that charity. Get out there and start doing things. So that's what this show's all about today. We're talking about really trying to find ways that we can invest in ourselves. And like I said earlier, what better way to start out 2020 than to investing in yourself? You're listening to My Strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. When we come back, we're going to talk about some key areas that you should be focusing on. We'll be right back. Hi, and welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. The show is called My Strategy. We're here every Saturday. Uh, from 10 a.m. Pacific to 1 p.m. or and at 1 p.m. Eastern. So 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern is when my strategy is. Right before the break, we were talking about investing in yourself, how to create good habits and a process to get you where you need to be. In this segment, I want to talk about areas to focus your personal investment on. What are the areas that we should be focusing our investment on? I've got an article here by Royale Scuderi. And it's called How to Invest in Yourself, Three Valuable Ways to Change Your Life. You know, and as we go through the show, starting to come up with our own strategy, take some notes and, and write those down. And as we get to the developing the strategy, 
uh, that might help you uh, when we start to put all this together. So she says, investing in yourself may be the most profitable investment you'll ever make. It yields not only future returns, but all, often a current payoff as well. The surest way to achieve a better quality of life, to be successful, productive, and satisfied, is to place a priority on investing in both personal and professional growth. The effort you put into consistently investing in yourself plays a large role in determining the quality of your life now and in the future. So she gives us three things to focus on. And keep in mind that we're going to be talking about a lot of different tips and strategies. But I like these three because she keeps it sort of concrete and she keeps it at a fairly high level and gives us, you know, three areas to focus on rather than some of the other authors that gave us 35 different tips to try. So we're going to try and figure out from our perspective what are those areas we need to be thinking about um, based off of her recommendations here. So the first, she says, is develop your skills. The second is explore your creative side. And the third is nurture your mind and body. And I think, you know, these three are just as good of areas to focus on as any of the other tips and strategies that we might be talking about later in the show. But let's talk about it from a developing your skills perspective. Improving your skills doesn't always mean improving them and investing in higher education, although it's an option um, and maybe de necessary depending on your career field. You're not going to be a neurosurgeon unless you have the schooling. Um, but interesting, interest, investing in your knowledge and the skills can take many forms. So she says, as you start to think about what are your skills, what can you bring to the table, what can you do? Think about it from that perspective. And in some cases, your education is important. Extra classes, advanced degrees, relevant certifications are all valuable investments. She suggests utilizing available training, workshops, conferences, uh, participation in webinars, and others. Expand your knowledge. Lots of information available on a variety of subjects. Read books, articles, write papers, anything related to the talent or skill you want to work on. Keep current. Stay abreast of the latest trends or advancements. Subscribe to publications. Read blogs of experts and follow the latest news. I like her suggestion here with regard to developing skills. She's done a nice job of encapsulating all the things that we're going to be talking about with regard to the tactics um, that are going to be implemented to build up our strategy. But from that perspective, that's, that's a great block. Develop your skills. Okay. The next one is explore your creative side. And I think this is one of those areas that, you know, we're really good at when we're in kindergarten through first grade, where we have to create, uh, you know, um, a paper mache uh, diorama for our uh, a class project or something along those lines, or we need to paint. We're all experts at painting, and we bring it home to mom and dad, and they tell us that we did a terrific job. But at some point, some of us continue on that creative path, and they uh, continue with that. But uh, the majority of us, I would say, you know, based on my observation, we feel that we're not creative. We feel and start saying things that limit our ability to create. I can't paint. I can't write. I can't, I can't, I can't. So from this perspective, the second area where it says explore your creative side, I think is a good thing to think about. She says there's a fountain of creativity within mo most of us that has never been tapped or certainly hasn't been used to its highest potential. We may need to unearth it. Creativity in any forms helps us grow personally and professionally to view problems and solutions in different ways and utilize other parts of our mind that may have been previously untapped. It's important to keep in mind that creativity has many faces. I think this is important. Creativity can be applied to any problem that's out there, any field. It's not just art creativity. It's not just music. It's just not the arts per se, but it is if you're trying to solve a business problem, if you're trying to solve a personal development problem, you know, so anything does require some degree of cre creativity to solve the problem. So what she suggests doing is try learning a new language, try gourmet cooking, write something, anything, a book, short stories, poetry, explore the world outside, gardening, bird watching, or landscape photography. If you enjoy music, play an instrument, learn a new one, Join a music group of some kind. Create something tangible. Paint, sculpt, make pottery, jewelry, or design your own clothes. And these are her ideas. 
But if you think about it from that perspective, why not try doing something creative? Try, you know, get involved in a painting class, get involved in something so that you can start to develop that creativity. And once you start to unlock that creative side of you, it's going to give you the ability to apply it to other areas. So it's develop your skills, explore your creative side in number two, and then the number three is nurture your mind and body. And I think this one is absolutely so important. Many times people become so focused on the goal, they start focusing on what they need to accomplish that they forget about self. They, they work you know, 16, 17 hours a day in some cases. They're traveling nonstop. They're out there trying to be successful. But at the end of the day, their body's suffering. And while they might be able to stay on track and keep going for a, a certain amount of time, at some point, you do need to invest in that body, in that mind. So she suggests that you need to nurture both body and mind so that you have more not only now but also in the future. Expand your mind. Read. Explore culture. Open your mind. Engage in conversations with those who disagree with you. Keep your mind active by playing word games. Then she says care for your body. Like your body is a well-oiled machine. The more you care for it, the better it will be to you. Give it high-quality fuel. Don't push it too hard. Get regular and necessary maintenance. Polish the exterior, meaning to take care of the outside, too. People might dismiss this as frivolous and self-indulgent, but it's not as long as you don't go overboard. So those are some of the areas that she suggests that we should be thinking about. Again, she says investing in yourself truly makes a difference in your life, your well-being, your abilities to extend to which you invest in yourself, mind, body, not only shapes the world, but it also shapes the opinions of those in the world on you. You're listening to My Strategy. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. When we come back, we're going to talk about low-cost ways to start investing in you. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. The show is called My Strategy, which is uh, live on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Today, we're talking about in, about investing in yourself. Right before the break, we were talking about three areas you could focus on. In this segment, I want to talk about some low-cost ways to invest in yourself. So we've been talking about investing in yourself, creating those habits, the process. Talked about three core areas that we could focus on with regard to, you know, where you should be spending your time investing in yourself. And in this segment, I want to talk a little bit about some low-cost ways to invest in yourself. And this is an article here by Alexa Mason. And she uh, kind of looked into this and came up with some ways that you could invest in yourself. She says it's a new year, a new you, right? While the new year brings good intentions, it can also be a total budget buster, especially if you're going to go out and buy a ton of new gear to work on resolutions. Well, happy new year. And isn't that what happens? You decide you're going to work on yourself and you go out and get the gym membership. You go out and get the new uh, sign up for new classes. You sign up for all these new things and you spend a ton of money. And then uh, how how far does that take you? So from this perspective, she's saying, if you're really looking to go out there and invest in yourself, try some low-cost options first to see what, it, what works, what you're interested in. And once you start to really get engaged, then start to spend the money on them. She says, otherwise, you're going to end up going out and spending lots and lots of money on uh, learning what to do this year. And at the end of the day, uh, it is not all going to pan out. So she gave us some ideas here. Number one, she says, take free online courses when you're trying to learn a new skill. And she says, just because a course is free doesn't mean that there isn't value to it. Quite the contrary. And I think, too, that, you know, this is really a good point. You know, not only are there lots of good free courses out there, but there's lots of people out there willing to share their knowledge for free. Uh, and it might be good for you to go out there and look at those free sources and just see what they have to say. Um, it can also help you uh, determine your own strategy and figure out where you do want to invest your hard-earned money on your personal development. 
she says um there's also low cost uh places out there too like udemy i know is one of them it's an education portal and they've got uh you know it's you know, and you might be aware of the master class well that's expensive uh, but if you look at udemy you can get courses for like 19 dollars, and they're in lots of different areas they've got investing courses they've got cooking they've got all sorts of different things so if you can't find the free option that meets your need try one of those low cost options because you never know right i mean it might be something that you really are good at and you want to do but wouldn't it be better to just invest minimal dollars into that and figure it out rather than signing up for cooking school that lasts three months that costs a lot of money along with signing up with your personal trainer you know we can we can do things that are cost effective now once you've figured out you know what you want to do then put the right team in place and make those investments but until then this author's this uh, writer suggesting uh, that we try and do this as low cost as possible she says read new books a month every month she says it's uh, hard to believe over eight years ago she got interested in personal finance someone had made a suggestion and she went in there into the library and read a book and started going back for more and more books and she said that this really helped her not only with her personal development but with her business as well so from that perspective the library is a great place you know sometimes we don't think about it on a regular basis but there are good options for you to go go to the library and sit down and start reading and seeing what's out there what about free workout videos she says the average cost of a gym membership is $58, and 67% of memberships go unused. Well, here we go. We go sign up for that membership, that subscription, and we don't use it. She says try some of those free workout videos if you're getting into working out before you go and make the full investment. She says the other thing you can do is you know start a side business. It's one way for you to increase your income and explore alternative career opportunities this year. And in our podcast a couple uh, weeks ago, last year, now it was, I realize we're just in the first uh, couple weeks here of January. But, um, you know, think about it from the gig economy perspective. We've got a great podcast out there if you're interested in learning more about getting a gig and starting your side hustle. Uh, number five, she says, eat healthier foods. And, I, and th this is something that you can always do. I don't know anybody who eats perfectly healthy all the time. Um, but really, as you're going through and focusing on, you know, nutrition, if you don't have that nutritional expert, you know, and you go to the doctor, try and figure out exactly how you are from a nutritional perspective. There's, you know, free tests out there that you can take at, at gyms. They'll let you do a free test or assessment to let you know exactly where your body is. And by doing that calculations, your oxygen levels, uh, determining you know your percent body fat that's going to give you a benchmark of where you are and with that free benchmark it can help you make other decisions so as you start to think about eating healthier foods it's really important to get the data so that you know exactly where to focus those efforts on here's another one organize your home and we've talked about this before but she says here scientists have linked clutter to the inability to focus an increase in mental stress, depression, even fatigue, which uh, is affecting more women than men. She says if those aren't good reasons to get more organized this year, then she doesn't know what is. And I think this is absolutely imperative uh, from an organizational perspective. And it's not just your home, but it's your work environment. It's your desk. When you go and sit down at your desk, if you have a certain environment that's set up, and you've got you know everything in place that is going to set a frame of mind a reference it's going to give you things to think about just try for once cleaning everything off the desk go to absolutely scratch and you're going to find that when you sit down at that desk you're not going to be ruminating on those old pictures ruminating on what needs to be done in your to-do pile but you're going to have a completely fresh perspective so in many cases, just, just organization can help as well. She says also start a budget, something low cost you can do. Uh, contact one new person per week. Make a plan to get out of debt if you are in debt. And then have weekly goal setting and a checkup day. And you can use the My Strategy radio program as your weekly checkup. 
Just join us on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, and we will help you out. You're listening to My Strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. When we come back, we're going to talk about strategies to keep you on track. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. The show is called My Strategy. And if you are just joining us, My Strategy episodes are live and on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Today we're talking about investing in yourself. We're talking about the most important investment that you can ever make, and that is to invest in yourself. We're talking about the meaning of investing in yourself, the focus areas, and we're teaching you how to develop a strategy and a plan. Right before the break, we talked about low-cost ways you can invest in yourself rather than just going out there and breaking the financial bank by signing up for all sorts of new courses, subscriptions, and other things to start the new year off. In this segment, I want to talk a little bit about some strategies that we can use to help keep you on track. Because as we start to go through and implement a strategy, one should know that not every course of action, not every tactic is going to help us get to our goal. And so from that perspective, we need to find things and put measures in place to keep us on track. Got an article by Candace Elliott. She talks about the best way to invest in yourself. Candace suggests that we should invest in our mind. Some of us take meticulous care of our bodies. We go to the gym, we eat properly, exfoliate twice a week. But we don't spend nearly as much of those efforts on our minds. We talked a little bit about that in a previous segment, investing in the minds, and I do think that's important. The quiet time spent reading and the time spent focusing on something pleasurable to increase the benefits. As she wrote, it doesn't matter so much what you read, but if you want to make reading count even more as a way to invest in yourself, read something beautiful, something inspiring, something educational. This is interesting because prior we talked about learning, expanding, you know, getting the mind going. But in this case, you know, we really want to think about what are we spending our time reading? If you're just focused on trade magazines and focusing on a technical aspect, is that really helping you from a personal development perspective? Should you start to broaden your skills? So I think as we start to think about what we've been focusing on, you know, it can get very disheartening just focusing on a, on a specific single-threaded activity, single-threaded subject, focusing on just one area. And by expanding your mind to something pleasurable that you enjoy, and that can also help. She says also create order. And this was something that was important in the la- that we talked about in the last segment, and I absolutely subscribe to as well. Uh, one, one here she's got is uh, meditate. She says she actually hates doing this while she hates doing this, but she can see the benefits from doing it after. And she has to keep doing it consistently. And I think from a meditation perspective, it it doesn't have to be something that's too elaborate, but it's the quiet time. It's not having the mobile device. It's being to yourself, being in nature, being in places that you get good energy from. You know, in in my book, Coach to Greatness, I did a lot of research on environments and the energy that comes from those environments. So, for example, when you're on an airplane and you hear that slow rumble of the engines from the jet, the next thing you know, you look around and everybody's asleep right well that is energy coming off of those engines and if you go into your environments you'll realize there's energy coming from a different energy coming from every different place you're in so start thinking about the energy and and where you're spending your time you know that that energy those those vibrations sound vibrations can impact you Um, You know, something as simple as an air conditioning might not seem like it's impacting you, but that slow hum actually can have an impact on your mind and your state of being. Also, you know, a fan. So if you think about it from that perspective, just 
or music, right? If you're listening to music, if something as simple as music, a fan, an air conditioning unit can impact your state of mind, there's got to be other energy out there as well, no matter where you are. And it could be other energy or lack thereof energy. So, for example, when we go into nature and you hear the, the wind blowing, the birds chirping, there's no cars honking, city sounds, it's a different energy. So I really think it's important for us to start to think about what are those environments that we're spending time in. Uh, she says, get it out of your head. This is a great one. She says, do you sometimes lay in bed at night not being able to sleep because you can't stop thinking about all the things you have to do the following day? How many of you do that? You get in bed, you're going to go to sleep, and next thing you know, it's 30 minutes later, an hour later, two hours later, you're not asleep because you're thinking about all the things that you have to do. And I think that this is something that many, many, many people face. And so she suggests, and I've heard this one before, write a to-do list before you go to sleep. And in writing that to-do list, you just keep a notepad by your desk. And as you write down all those things that you need to do, you know that you're not going to forget them. They're on that piece of paper. And then you have the ability to focus on what you need to do, which is go to sleep. The other thing I do, which is a, a strategy that I've been using for many years now, but you just envision this cardboard box or this container. And whenever you have a thought that you don't want to think about while you're sleeping, you take that thought and you mentally put it in this uh, cardboard box or a container and you gently in your mind push it away. And then when a new thought comes into your mind, you put that in that container, you bring the container back mentally, and you push it away. And you'll find that at some point after you've put these thoughts in your mind in these containers and push it away, you're not thinking about anything because you've found a way in your mind to compartmentalize those thoughts. And that gives you the ability to really focus on what you need to do, which is getting a good night rest. What about what would a friend say? You know, and from our from our own perspective, we're very hard on ourselves. She says, she says, when we speak internally to ourselves, we can be brutal. We use things and words to describe us like stupid, lazy, fat, a failure. But would you say these things to a friend? <laughs> well, you might do it on social media, um, but to people you don't know, but you wouldn't do that to yourself. So what she's saying here is that, you know, really look at it from a different perspective. Don't belittle yourself. Don't tell yourself you're fat, you're stupid, you can't do things. But really look at it from yourself from a nurturing friend. And what would that friend say to you? She's got tons of other tips in here like a full body checkup, start habits, even drinking water, sleeping, front load your day, don't sit all day. I think that's a good one and goes along with uh, physical activity. But when you sit all day, that can be very detrimental uh, to your health because you're in a fixed position. So that's where you need to go to the gym. You need to find exercises that are going to exercise those muscles to compensate for that sitting that you've been doing all day. So really some good tips here on what we can do to get back in tr on track, on track here, and that's by Candace Elliott. You're listening to My Strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. When we come back, we're going to talk about developing your personal investment strategy. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. The show is called My Strategy. Today, we've been talking about investing in yourself. We've been talking about the most important investment you can make, which is to invest in yourself talking about the meaning of investing, focus areas, and teaching you how to develop a strategy and a plan. Right before the break, we were talking about some strategies to help keep you on track, uh, to focus on investing in yourself and help you get unstuck. In this segment, I want to talk a little bit about developing your investment strategy. Now, if you're a regular listener to the show, you'll know that I have a systematic approach that I use uh, to solve, do all my problem solving. And, the re and it's a five-step process. And the reason I have five steps is because I have five fingers, and that makes it easy to remember all of those steps. So the systematic approach includes awareness, right? What are we trying to accomplish? What's our vision? What's our goal? What are we trying to achieve? 
you know, all of this has to be thought of, and we base it off of our core values. So what is that vision? What are we trying to do? What is that area that we want to focus on? The next is assess and analyze. By assessing a situation and doing some analysis, you can figure out what steps to take. And I think that, you know, it's important before you go out and start to just take decisions and start to try new things, while it can be good, it's also important to get data and metrics on what it is you're trying to solve. So, for example, if a New Year's resolution is to go out there and, and be healthier and eat better, you want to get the data before you go out there and start taking up an exercise program or start, you know, nutrition, uh, changing your diet. Because if you don't know what you are trying to correct for, if you don't have that data up front, you're just guessing. You, you might start to think you're eating healthier, but really you had a vitamin deficiency. Or you think that, you know, you're going to go to the gym and really focus on a specific exercise, when in reality, that isn't what you should be focusing on. So we want to really think about this from, you know, an assessment perspective and analyze. And it doesn't have to be super uh, a deep assessment and thorough, but just, just run that through your mind and, and just think about, well, what, where am I? What does the data show me? Strategize and plan. So once we've identified that, we then want to, you know, figure out what are those courses of actions that we're doing. And really, you know, not only the courses that, of actions that we're not doing and should be doing, but what are those courses of actions that we are doing that take time that we should not do as much of? So by thinking about our day, by figuring out what it is that we spend, you know, in a 24-hour period, what are those activities, really start to, you know, think about those in terms of how are those impacting my vision, my goals? How is that how is that helping me or hurting me from getting to my future state? Then we need to implement the plan because it's one thing to have a plan and to talk about it, uh, but then we need to implement it. So from an implementation perspective, we need to start acting on those new strategies. We need to implement that new tactic. It's one thing to say, I want to you know, be fit in 2020. I want to you know, start X. I want to start Y. I want to start Z. But you have to implement it. You have to start somewhere. And so from a strategy perspective, I think you know, we learned a little bit about uh, some free or low-cost investments. Just do one of the free or low-cost ones if you're on the fence about starting a new program. And if you take something that's free, it's going to give you more information and might also help direct you to the best uh, program for you. And then finally, after we've implemented it, it's important to support and evaluate. You know, your support plan, your support team, those who are in place to help you be successful. Who's helping you become accountable? Who's responsible? Do you have help? Do you have role models? Do you have friends? Do you have a plan? So from that perspective, as we start to think about building and developing our personal investment strategy, we really want to, to start thinking about it in, those, in terms of those five different key areas. And I think that the other thing to think about is, you know, there's habits and actions that are going to impact what we are doing. So I've got this other article here uh, that talks about uh, ways to invest in yourself. And I want to go through some of those. And as we go through these, just start thinking about some of the ones that you could use in your own personal strategy and see how that would impact you. So, you know, we talked about activities that you're doing, but also activities that you're not doing. So it's going to include a combination of both of those and, and just kind of think about it, make some mental notes. And then once you've thought about it, you can determine, do I need to invest more in this area or less in this area? So uh, this article here, um, unfortunately, I don't have the article author's name, uh, but it's called 35 Powerful Ways to Invest in Yourself Now. It will change your life. And they list some ideas. So watch less TV and choose more positive shows. Are you doing too much of that or not enough? A visit positive websites. Read books or ebooks. Stay in touch with family and friends. Choose your friends wisely. Boy, that uh, brings back memories. My mother was always talking about our, my friends and who I should be friends with and who I not, should not be friends with. Things come full circle. Get rid of toxic friends. Find a mentor. Learn something new and take a class. 
engage in creative activities, learn a new language, set goals, plan your day and week, measure your results, practice gratitude, meditate and practice mindfulness, exercise, go for medical visits. If you are 21 years or older, drink less alcohol. Uh, practice healthy activities and hobbies. Eat healthier. Learn to cook. Sleep and wake up earlier. Stop procrastinating. Learn to manage your time. Develop a routine. Travel. Save your money. Invest your money. Spend time and on experiences rather than stuff. Challenge yourself to do things that are difficult. Now, naturally, I'm going through all of these, and one thing's very important to know is that there's 35 of these. There's no way that you could sit down and implement all of these. And so from that perspective, that's where, as you're starting to build your strategy, you want to get the data on where you are and figure out exactly which of these areas you should be focusing on. So it takes a little bit of work. Um, but if you do think about it and assess the data, it'll give you some pretty good ideas of what you should be doing. You're listening to My Strategy. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. When we come back, we're going to help you put your plan in place. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back, everyone. This show is My Strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We're very happy to be here with you today. Today we've been talking about investing in yourself. And in case you've missed this broadcast, uh, you can go to iHeartRadio, Apple iTunes, or any of the other digital platforms and uh, listen to the podcast. And then if you'd like to have something covered in this show, uh, you can send an email to talk at johnmhawkins.com. That's talk at johnmhawkins.com. Or you can give me a call at 1-844-MY-STRATEGY. That's 844-MY-STRATEGY. Today we've been talking about investing in yourself, the important, in, most important investment you can make. And talking about the meaning of investing in yourself, the focus areas, and helping you to develop a plan. Well, we've been talking about investing in yourself and how to create the good habits and the good processes. What does this mean? It means that you have to have a methodology in place, a process, a way that you go about organizing and creating your strategy and your plan. So we need to understand exactly what it is that we are trying to accomplish here. What are we good at? What are we deficient at from a habit perspective? So... If we, are, if we are, you know, really just focusing on watching TV 24 hours a day or sitting on our mobile device, we don't have good habits. We don't have a process in place. But if you spend 30 minutes a day, you know, working on your strategy and you spend an hour every two days working on actions that are going to help you accomplish that strategy, that's what I mean by having good habits and good process in place. If we want to solve a problem, we have to dedicate time to it. And that process needs to be there. Next thing we need to be thinking about is areas to focus our investment. Where Do we need to develop new skills? Are we trying to solve problems the same old way and we need to think creatively about that problem as opposed to just trying to solve it the same old way? We also need to make sure that our mind and body are being nourished and worked on as well. So as you think about it from that perspective, what are those areas that you should be focusing on? Developing new skills, being a creative problem solver, or is it the mind and body that's failing you? We then talked about some low-cost ways to invest in yourself. If you start the new year and went out there and were to spend money on subscriptions to do your new uh, spin class, your new um, gym membership, your trainer, uh, start the cooking class, start the guitar class or whatever, that's going to cost a lot of money. So this author talked about some low-cost ways we can do that and identifying those low-cost ways is going to give us the ability to learn. 
what we really want to do, and then we'll focus our monies there. We then talked about some strategies to keep you on track. Things that we do in our normal every day, you know, like keeping clutter uh, out, out of our life. Um, get things out of your head so that you can sleep at night and focus on what it is that's most important. What about looking at things from a different perspective? In many cases, we're very hard on ourselves, and that's not going to help us get to our goal. So we need to look at things from a new perspective, from a friend, kind, nurturing, caring perspective, as opposed to the one where we're a defeatist, we're, we're not good, we're fat, we're this, we're that. We really want to have the right mindset. And then looking at, uh, you know, really trying to develop that strategy, we want to do this strategically. We want to assess and figure out where we are. What is our vision? What is our current state? What are those things that are working? What are the things that are not working? And we need to really figure out through data to figure out what we want to invest in and what we don't want to invest in. So hopefully that will help you uh, with your strategy. Keep in mind that breaking habits can be hard, but if we are aware of it and we do conscious prioritization, it will give us the ability to make some progress. Well, Happy New Year, everyone. Thanks so much for being here. You've been listening to my strategy. I'm John M. Hawkins. We're on the BBM Global Network, and we'll see you next time. Take care.